Hey, what's up, guys? It's Marty here from Nintendo Dads, and I am so excited to be back with another first look for one of, well, it's quite possibly one of my top five board games of all time. And it's called Wingspan, and it's now on Nintendo Switch. Wingspan is a game about raising birds, hatching birds, collecting birds, bird watching, getting them to lay eggs. And I know that that does not sound really cool right at the very beginning, but... But this game is fantastic. It's so tranquil. It has absolutely fantastic artwork. And I promise you, if you love board games, this is a game that you definitely need to take a chance on for your own collection. And I don't know how well this is going to translate over to a first look, but I thought I would at least show you some things about the game and, and tell you even parents that are out there, this game can even be educational uh, for you and your kids as well. And so it's definitely one you want to look into. I think that uh, this is one that would be great to play at home. Even has online play, and you can check out the the different birds and um, you know the preserve archive here, which I'm not entirely sure what the preserve archive does. But uh, even diving in for the first time, you get a very ro robust tutorial that teaches you how to play the game. Basically, if you've ever played any board games, this is kind of a it's almost like a worker placement game, but it's also uh, a I don't know how to do an engine building game. Uh, and for those of you who are unfamiliar with those terms, a worker placement game is you place different pieces or your workers in different spots on the board and they do different things. You can do that with Wingspan. But also, as you collect more birds into your collection, uh, they allow you to open up newer spaces on the board. And when those spaces are triggered, they go in reverse order across the board and so the more spaces that you have, the more actions you trigger per turn, which lead to some big bonuses. So there is a little bit of thinking that is involved in, the, in these games, um, in this game. But again, it's so, uh, it's just, look at this art. It's so good, y'all. Um, and as, you, as you're there, you can see it gives you some, the first time you play a bird, it's going to give you actual facts about the bird. Here you can tell where... Um, the bird shows up in the world by the green uh, highlighted countries and here on the left you're actually going to see uh, an example of its card up in the top is where you can uh, the top left corner is where you can play the bird uh, in this one you can play it in the grassland or the wetland space on your board it takes a worm or a uh, or an invertebrate as the game calls I call it a worm uh, an invertebrate or a wheat or seed to play it gets you one point which is represented by the feathers uh, and there it shows you its kind of nest as well uh, right underneath the birds tail feathers uh, as well as its wingspan which actually the cards actually use wingspan for bonuses and different things and you can see here this brown action when activated you discard one egg that's on this card and you can see the egg spaces in the bottom right, right hand or the bottom left hand corner you can discard one egg to draw two cards, uh, which would be more birds for you to play. Uh, and in our first game that we played through the tutorial, we got several birds. Barn Swallow, uh, the Black Vulture, which there's actually predators in this game as well, and they have totally different act actions. The Carolina Chickadee. Uh, and if you hear me talking very excitedly about this, I want you to understand I'm not a bird enthusiast at all, but this game is so good that it makes me care about birds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, and the art it just is is fantastic. The music so tranquil in the background, uh, y'all. It's twenty bucks. I don't know what more to say. You, you go, you, it's on the eShop right now, uh, and it is among. I, I was talking with some people uh, on, on another on a Facebook group the other day and was recommending this game. And here's the thing: there have been board game versions before for the Nintendo Switch. I, uh, Carcassonne is out there. Catan is out there, Pandemic is out there, Munchkin is out there, although it's not even really Munchkin, it's like a dungeon crawler. Um, and Sagrada is out there, it's a fantastic game as well. Uh, and somebody brought up that the version of Catan was not very good at all, and I will agree with that. The, the, the Switch version of Catan is not good. Don't base your board game on, uh, board gaming on the Switch off of Catan, please. Skip that. Carcassonne is a fantastic uh, port. Sagrada is a fantastic port. In fact, I have 
both Carcassonne and Catan on, or I'm sorry, Carcassonne and Sagrada on my iPad. I'd rather play them on the Switch. It, they, they just work better. And Wingspan, it's on Steam, it's on Switch. It's not, you're not going to get this experience on iPad yet. It is so good. So when you go into play, you're going to see here a tutorial where uh, this lovely red-headed lady will guide you through uh, your first game. You can also play a Toma, which is like playing against the computer, or you can play a custom game. And once you get into the custom game, uh, you can see here different slots. You can add in a human or AI. Uh, you can add in up to five. You can add in, uh, you can turn the goal mat on and off or just base it on points. Uh, and you can go in random order or you can go in sequential order and well, pretty bird up there at the beginning. Uh, and so I'm just going to go ahead and put it on an AI easy so you can see what it's like to get into the game. Uh, and we'll go there and there. So goals and press Y to go in and the transitions and everything. This is actually art from the game if you buy the board game version. Uh, but man, so cool. So uh, what you'll notice is the game of Wingspan is played over four rounds. And each round you have a number of actions that you can do. You will actually do these actions back and forth with your the people that you're playing with, whether it's a computer or whether it's other people. But you'll notice also that each round you get one less action. So starting with round one, there's eight, seven, six, and five. With round actions at the end, which you can see by flicking up on the um, the the right stick. I'll show you that here in a minute. But if you notice here, on your turn, you will take a four, one of four actions. So these are the four things you can do with each action cube that you have. This is where the worker placement comes in because you'll actually place these in different spots. You can play a bird from your hand if you have enough food. You can gain food and activate forest bird powers in the forest section. You can, in the grassland, you can lay eggs and activate bird powers. Or in the wetland section, you can draw bird cards and activate wetland bird powers. And you can do that um, by swapping back and forth between those with L and R. Choose five things to keep among bird cards and food. So if you'll notice right now at the bottom, I have five different types of food that I can start the game with. And I also have different birds that I get here at the beginning. And so I want to keep at least, and, and you could do any kind of strategy here, but I think that I'm going to keep two birds and three food. And so uh, which ones of these will work best for me? Uh, I have lots of forest birds. And I only have one grassland bird, so we're going to do, keep uh, the red crossbill because it gets us the most points for the least amount of food. We're also going to get the northern bobwhite because it's a it's a different section. And then we'll skip down here to the food. Whoop! I don't know what I did there. Oh, now I'm down here at the food. And we're definitely going to keep a wheat or seed. And we will also keep, um, I don't know, which one's cherry. And, and look, there's a whole thing for rolling over here, rolling the dice to get food and being able to pay two food of any kind for one food of another kind. So we'll just go with a mouse. We'll go with a thing there and we'll go with a cherry. How about that? And then it brings up the menu for Y. Press that. And now I get to choose one bonus card. So if I, ah, I, I wish I'd have seen these. I wish I'd have checked them before then. So this is, it triggers with birds that live in the forest or birds that have a predator power. Well, I don't have any of those yet, but I do have birds that live in the forest. So I, 24% of cards, and notice that's 13% of cards. I'm going for the 24%, right? Okay, press Y. And now it's our first turn. So we're in the forest. Uh, Puffin's going first. We can actually press L and R to switch back and forth. We'll zoom out to the grasslands, and there you see this is where you can... And these are actually the spaces I was talking about before with the engine building. So see, there's zero egg cost to play a forest bird on the first space, but then that makes it where I can use the space to the right of it. Does that make sense? I can use the ones that are, that are, that are visible. So if I play my bird here in the leftmost space, then the right, the space right next to it with the die and the card with the arrow pointing to the die 
would be the one I would use. So basically what that's saying is I would roll a die to get food, but then I could give up a card to roll an additional die or to roll again or to take a second one. And then from there you can see I get more and more food. Uh, in the grasslands, it's la it's all about laying eggs. And so if I use this first part, I can lay two eggs. Or on the next one, I can lay two eggs and then use any food type to lay an additional egg and on and on. And then the grasslands, it's about draw or wetlands, it's about drawing bird cards. So in the first one, I can draw one of the face-up bird cards in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, the wood stork, the red-shouldered hawk, or the eastern screech owl. Or I can, if I play, I can draw a card and give up an egg to draw an additional card, or on and on and on. And I have eight actions. You can see that above my food. I have zero eggs. It shows me which kind of food types I have. And so for me, for right now, I think the best thing to do would be to roll for food. And so I can gain food from the bird feeder. Over here right now, I see that there is a seed that I need. So I'm going to hit A to use that power. And I'm going to move over to pick the seed. And then I'm going to press Y. And you notice up here at the top, there's now a, a square up at the top of the, the circle where the dice are. That is means I'm taking one die out. Why is that important? Because if I ever take out enough die, uh, or enough dice, that all the rest of them in there are the same type of food, I can re-roll all of them. That's how you, you kind of manipulate the dice tray a little bit. And guys, all of this is explained in the thing. So here, I am going to now play a bird. So how do I play a bird? Well, you notice that one popped up because now it's able to be played. The way I do that is by pressing up on the control pad, not the stick. Tells you what it does. When activated, all players gain one seed from the supply, not the dice, but the actual supply. So that's, you know, I'm trading off. I'm going to be giving people seed, uh, but I'm getting six points. All right, so I'm going to play that right there. I'm going to pay. It's going to ask me to show the food I'm paying. I, pre I can press A to change, but I don't need to do that. I just need to press Y. And if you'll notice there by Y, there's a little arrow, curved arrow with a no symbol over it. That means this cannot be taken back at any time. All right. So once I press Y, I'm locked in. So here we go. We're going to lock Red it in. We're going to play the bird. Ball. These birds use their specialized bills to pry apart conifer seed cones. Did you notice that? It taught us a little bit about the red cross bill. It does that the first time you play any bird. And now I have six points. How do I know that? Well, I can flick up on the right stick and I can see the actual board at any time, as well as I can see by pressing a minus button, I can kind of see where I'm at. All right, right now, my total score is six, as you can see that there. And it looks like right now, right now I needed to have played in round one to get four points at the end. I would have needed to play or have birds with that type of nest with eggs on them. Well, I don't have any birds of that type with a nest on them or, or with a nest. So what I can do is I can go and look down here in the bottom left hand or right hand corner of the entire board. This lets me see everything I've played. It lets me see what's able to be drawn. It lets me see my air, literally all of it. I can press R to see the other side of it. Uh, but here I'm looking for, aha, red shouldered hawk has one of those nests that I need. So flick up on the right stick again and I'm going to swap down to this and I'm going to use one of my actions to draw bird card. So press A and now I want this bird, right? And what we're really working toward here is we want to be able to play him, which I already have a mouse, and then we want to be able to spawn eggs on him so that I get those bonus points at the end of the round. And that's going to take one action to draw it, one action to play it, one action to spawn eggs, and then I'm good. So we're going to have two actions left after that. And we're going to do all of that at the same time. So now my opponent's taking his turn. And just for full disclosure, I, I should have mentioned this. This board that I'm playing on is not the whole board, okay? This is my board. If we were playing the, the board game version, like the actual tabletop version of this, all of us would have our own board 
with forest, grasslands, and wetlands on them where we play our own birds. We're kind of playing the game together and against each other because the draw pile and the food pile is all and the egg pile is all for everybody, but you're also kind of playing your own game. All right? So, with that being said, now we're going to go back to here and we're going to play... We're going to play a bird. Because we can play this bird here. Actually, we're going to go back. Because we can play this bird here. Hmm. I've run into a problem. Do you see what the problem is? I need an egg to play here. I need an egg. So, how do we do that? Well, we're going to go back to here and we're going to lay eggs. I'm going to now select a bird to lay eggs because I can lay two. So I'll flip back here to here and I will put the eggs on my bird by pressing A and then press Y. And I'm done with my turn. Basically all that's going to do is it's going to delay what we were going to do an extra turn. So now, now he pops up. So now we can play him. And now I have to pay an egg. So I'm going to pay one from there press Y again and now I can use this next action here in the forest to actually take two food per turn instead of just one now I don't have to pay an egg for that the egg is only for when I play birds so what did I need to do I needed to get a bird with that type of nest I needed to get eggs on it so because look press minus here birds with Birds of that type with eggs. Alright, so we're going to lay eggs. And we'll flop back up here and select a bird to lay eggs. This one is going to lay eggs. And we're going to press Y. And now, if we look, we're one and one. Did you see that? So that means that we will split that bonus at the end of the round. Gotcha. So, here we go. Next, next thing we need to do here. I've got two left. So, and I'm also winning right now in the birds that can only live in the forest habitat. What we need to do is we need to get some food. And the fish are the only two that are left in there. So now I'm going to choose this. And you'll notice that the reroll option has come up in the choose food menu which is down there that shows the little birdhouse with the recycle symbol or the reroll symbol, the circle with the arrow. That actually, when you buy the, the tabletop version of this, it actually comes with what's something called a dice tower that's shaped like a birdhouse. A dice tower is like a, a little tower. You put the dice on the top and it rolls it for you as they fall down. It's really cool. So we're going to hit A and we're going to hope for seed because that's what we need. Ugh. Oh gosh. Okay, so that's cool. Now look, here's what we're going to do. We're going to choose bird for, f food from the bird feeder, and here's why. I can use this one as either an invertebrate or a seed. So I'll take that one, and I'm going to take the seed. And then I get another one. But that means I can turn my cherries into seeds, so I might be able to play the northern bobwhite by the end of this turn, or the end of this round. So I'm going to take that, and I'm going to press Y to lock it in. And now, notice because I've done that, we're now moving down the line and all those birds' powers activate, right? So here it says, it, I get this bird, it says look at a card from the deck. If it's less than 75 centimeters wingspan, tuck it behind this bird. All tucked cards are worth one victory point at the end of the game. So we're going to look and see what it is. And it is less, check mark. Are we going to tuck it? Yes, we are. So now that bird is worth four points instead of the other. And we can go here and we can see that I now have 12 points from birds and other things. All right. So uh, I also gain one from the supply. So next time I'm not even going to need to roll. But that also gives my opponent one as well. But that means I'm going to be able to play the Northern, Bob, Northern Bob White next time, and it will put me in a really good place going into round two. All right? So he's gained food. We're actually going to go play a bird. 
we're going to play the Northern Bob White. And I also notice when it's activated. So each time the, the thing comes down, right, you know, as we go from right to left, you'll lay an egg on that bird every time. So this is an excellent bird for producing eggs. So we're going to play that. And you'll notice it takes two seed and it takes two berries. The berries equal one seed. If it was two fish, it would equal one seed. If it was one mouse, it would equal one, or two mice, it would equal one seed. Any two of anything equals one of anything else. But they have to match. All right, so we're going to hit Y. That bird is played. And that is the end of round one. He played one more bird with a twig nest, so he got four points. I got one. So now we'll press Y to hit that, and we'll go into the next round. It's a very crafty player here. So ending that up and ending this uh, first look here, you'll notice that uh, I now have 19 points. And I'm already in round three and round four ahead because I have more total birds and I have more more total birds. That sounded weird. And, and I also have more birds in the grassland. Guys, this has been Wingspan, and I hope that you've enjoyed it. I highly, highly recommend this game. It is so much fun, both tabletop and uh, virtual or digital. It used to be one of the hardest to get tabletop games in the world because it was so popular when it came out, and you can see why. It's so much fun, uh, and I think it'd be great to play together uh, as well. I, I've not tried out the online yet, so I can't say anything about that, but it's something I'm really looking forward to diving into. And I hope you've really enjoyed this first look. You can keep it locked here at Nintendo Dads for all kinds of uh, news, reviews, playthroughs. And you know what? I hope you have a fantastic 2021, and I hope you go by Wingspan. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.